Hey there, my fellow barbecue enthusiast. Mike Baker here, Baker's Barbecue. Hey, today we're gonna to cook up a beef tri-tip and also a pork tenderloin. I've got the Oklahoma Joe's Bronco barrel smoker. I've taken out the deflector and I've got the firebox sitting in the bottom open. So what I'm gonna do is I've got this tenderloin and also the tri-tip. We're gonna, I've got them hooked up and we're gonna have them hanging directly over the coals in this barrel smoker. It's gonna be delicious. I've got the uh, tri-tip seasoned up with a little bit of my own personal beef rub, a little salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of onion in there, a little bit of paprika in there, and I've got some other spices I've thrown in there as well. Real salty, real savory, perfect for beef. So I'm looking forward to getting this cooked going. Hope you guys enjoy it. Go out there and get your own smokers fired up and cook right along with me. So let's get to cooking. So we have a two and a half pound beef tri-tip and we're ready to get it trimmed up. We're gonna season it. I'm gonna use my own personal rub on it today, which is a, it's got a base rub of salt, pepper, uh, garlic. Also got a little bit of onion powder in there. I threw a few other spices in there as well, a little paprika, uh, but it's gonna be a good uh, go-to salty Texas style rub, if you will, for, for beef. So uh, like I said in the opening uh, part of this video, I'm gonna have the tri-tip hanging off these hooks in my drum smoker. It's gonna be hanging directly over the charcoal and uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be delicious. It'll be up pretty good ways over the charcoal, hanging. All the juices will drip, hit the charcoal, go back up into the smoke, back into the, uh, the tri-tip and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. So uh, let's get this thing trimmed up, get it seasoned and uh, I'm gonna put it in the fridge after I do that for probably about four or five hours. Uh, let it go ahead and start forming a good uh, crust to the tri-tip from the seasoning. And uh, then in about four or five hours, we'll take it out, get it hanging in the drum smoker, and let it cook for probably, be, I'm thinking about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, we're gonna let it come to an internal temperature of right at 130, uh, 135. So uh, let's get to trimming, get to seasoning, and let's get this cook started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get as much of this excess fat trimmed off as we can. Uh, the the, the uh, tri-tip's gonna cook relatively quick, hour, hour and a half, and that doesn't allow for a lot of time for fat to render. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and cut, you know, trim off some of this excess fat, get it looking really good, we flip it over here. And this one here is actually not too bad. I mean, this tri-tip didn't have the real thick fat cap like you'll see sometimes on a brisket. And I actually dug through, there was probably 20 of these in the in the cooler or in the freezer at the uh, grocery store. And uh, I, actually, I actually got me a shopping cart, pulled it over there, dug through them all, and I looked at each one of them. Some of them weighed about two, two and a half pounds like this one, but the fat cap was about that thick. So by the time you cut the fat cap off, I mean, you're losing a whole lot of meat. So you don't want to buy that fat if you don't have to. So we're just going to go through, we're going to trim this off. Get as much of this fat cap off here as we can. Take it down to the meat. Because you don't want this stuff on here. Like I said, it's just gonna, it's not gonna add anything to the cook. And it's gonna be cooking relatively quick. So we're gonna take off as much of this here as we can. And I recommend, you know, get a pretty sharp knife. This here is a sharp knife I have. You can actually take the uh, fat cap, whether it be this, a brisket, or a Boston bud, or what have you, and you can actually shave down through it, taking off uh, you know, a slight layer at a time as you get down to that perfect, uh, perfect amount you want to take off there. So, so like I said, we're going to cook this you know, real similar to a steak. You know, I've seen, uh, I've talked to other barbecue enthusiasts like myself and like most of you guys and uh, be kind of interested to see the different ways that this has been, a tri-tip has been cooked. There's actually some that have taken this tri-tip and cooked it like you would a brisket and went ahead and smoked it to uh, about 205 in the center and said it absolutely turned out, you know, just delicious. So uh, we're gonna cook it today more like a steak. But in the future, I think I'm gonna take uh, may take a may take one of my cooks or one of my smoking uh, afternoons 
and buy a couple of these and do one more like a steak like we're gonna do today and then do the other one more like a brisket. And I think it'll probably take it, I figured it'd probably be a, maybe a four hour smoke if you did a, you know, a brisket top cook or maybe five. But uh, just do that just to see, you know, what we uh, think it would taste like. All right, so we're getting down close to getting all of this off of there. Get as much of that silky, that shiny, silky, fatty skin, if you will, or not skin, but fat there. Get that off. It's not going to bring any benefit to the uh, cooking process. And I can't stress enough, you know, taking the proper time to uh, trim your meat, whether you're doing, you know, tri-tip or if you're doing a Boston bud, if you're doing, you know, brisket, no matter what you're doing, that's a key part. And I've been smoking barbecue for a long time. And that's one of the first things that I learned years ago is taking that time during the trimming process to get your meat trimmed up and get it very presentable. And then not only that, but to make sure you got the proper fat content to where you're not, uh, you know, you're not losing out to being able to form bark and all the other kind of benefits you've got for getting that stuff off of there. So take a little bit of that off. Going through there and getting as much of that as I can. This side here is not looking too bad. A little bit of a few little spots here, no big deal. Some of that stuff can stay. Let's take it over here. Get this piece here out. It's a pretty good little, pretty good little fat chunk. And those real chunky pieces of fat, I mean, kind of like you can get on a brisket. I mean, those things just will not, will not render. And they're really not, uh, you know, appetizing at all when you run into that, when you take a big bite. So just gonna take this piece here. Let's get up under that. You know, another thing too, you know, I'll share with you. Don't be afraid of messing this stuff up. I know sometimes, you know, meat's expensive and you get it and you're like, man, I don't want to cut that off. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. But trust me, going ahead and getting it, getting it trimmed up proper, man, that's key. That's key to it being, you know, really good barbecue, a good steak or, you know, what have you. And you're going to have a little bit of loss. That's why I think it's important too. You know, like I was saying earlier, when I went, when I bought this piece of, uh, this piece of uh, meat here, this tri-tip, you know, I looked through them all and I found the one that had the least amount of trimming that was going to be done to it. Because I knew by doing that, I was getting the most meat that I could. And you also want to make sure that the meat is, uh, Pliable. You don't want a real firm, real hard piece of meat that tells you it's got a lot of a lot of grisly fat in there. So I do that too. I check to see, you know, how much uh, how much pliability do we have, which I think is key. So that's actually looking pretty good. Throw this fat away. And from there, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna season this sucker up. Pretty simple, like I said, using the uh, salt, pepper, garlic rubs that I put together. And this is what it looks like when it's done. Nice looking, got some granulated, the, uh, the pepper in there is granulated pepper. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and get my hooks in. Uh, it's pretty simple. This is gonna be the hook that's gonna hang in the Oklahoma Joe's, the, the, uh, the barrel smoker. We're gonna hang it from the big end, the heavy end. So I'm just gonna go right through here, just like that. Get it out the back side. And that's all there is to it right there. And I think I'm gonna go ahead 
Let's see here, let me take this one out first. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put two in here just so I don't run the risk of this thing falling off the hooks on me. So you did right there. So that way there, if it, if it were to get really tender, you wanna fall off the hooks, then you've got that thing, you got a backup right there. So let me wash my hands real quick before I get into that seasoning. So that's pretty basic stuff. It's not uh, that real complicated. Probably showing you maybe more than what you even really want, really want to watch or look at, but I figured I'd go ahead and show you the full amount. You know, you can fast forward if you get tired of watching this part of the smoke or you can watch it all. So it'll be pretty simple. So from here, I'm just gonna take the salt and the seasoning and just start putting it all over the meat. As you can see, we got some good black, coarse black pepper in there. Start turning the rim, make sure you're getting it all over it. All right, looking good. Just kind of turn it around sideways, get it all down the side. Down this other side here. Making a pretty good little mess here. That's the fun part of it. Like I said earlier, when we put this back in the fridge here shortly, it will be good because when it goes in the fridge, you'll see this starting to go ahead and form and a little bit of a crust here to it as it sits there. Salt to go ahead and start extracting a little bit of the moisture out of the uh, tri-tip, which is what you want. Kind of push that in there a little bit. Kind of flip it around, make sure you got it all real good. Add a little bit more. Some of the reason I'm going a little bit heavy is when you cook in a barrel smoker like I'm doing today, especially when you got the meat hanging, um, some of this will, was gonna naturally come off during that cooking process. So I probably got a little bit more on there than what you would maybe put on there if you're gonna go and set it in a smoker on the rack. But uh, this way here, it, uh, this way here, whenever that happens, or if I spritz it a little bit, which I probably won't do, just gonna cook fairly quick. The, uh, the, the uh, excess will come off a bit, so you'll have plenty left over when you get done. All right, so that's all we're gonna do to it. You got it trimmed up here, I'll straighten the hook up. Put it, I'm gonna put it in the fridge uncovered. I'm gonna let this uh, salt, pepper, uh, granulated garlic, little onion powder, all the stuff I got in this thing, kind of let it sit there and do its thing on this piece of meat. You'll see it starting to extract some of the moisture here in a little bit, and uh, it's gonna be beautiful. So look forward to getting this on, and uh, hold tight here just a little bit. We'll get that smoker fired up, and we'll get this bad boy hanging from the hooks over the coals. All right, so we're gonna get this uh, pork tenderloin and this beef uh, tri-tip uh, hanging here on the hooks. Let's get it opened up. Really good. Hang this beef tenderloin right up here. This is actually the tri-tip. I'm getting things backwards here today. Right here is the beef, right here is the pork tenderloin. Get it hanging right there. And I'm gonna get my thermometer probes in here. I'm gonna go down about midway there and just kind of get it in there about the center. I'll come back later and check that temperature as we get closer to, to being done, we'll check it and see more where we are. Get about right there. And that's gonna be it. We're gonna shut it down. I'm gonna throw me a couple chunks of wood down in here. 
And that's it. See it hanging. So we're going to shut it down. And we're just going to watch our inkbird uh, thermometer and let it go from there. All right, so we're about halfway through it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of spritz here. It's got a little bit of apple cider vinegar, just a little bit of water. Uh, not much flavor to this. I'm not trying to add flavor. I'm just wanting to make sure the meat uh, stays uh, hydrated. So let's take a quick look at it. Yeah, it's looking really good. Got a really good uh, outside color to it. Step around the back here. All right, if you guys can see that, pretty good. Not sure if you can, but anyway, it's looking really good. So we're gonna let it go for just a little while longer. All right, so my tri-tip has come up to about 135, which is where I wanted it at. So I'm gonna check the temp here on it real quick. Probably have it coming off a little bit sooner than I would the actual the uh, pork one. So let's take a or pork tender one. So let's take a quick look and see how our temperature's looking. All right, man, it's looking delicious. All right, so it's about 130, 135. 135, about right there. It'll be a little bit warmer towards the bottom. Getting about 140 at the bottom, a little bit warmer what I want it. All right, so we're good. We are good on the uh, on the beef tri-tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the beef tri-tip off. I'm gonna take it inside. I'm gonna go ahead and let it uh, rest. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let it rest up just a little bit while the other one finishes up here. All right, so the pork tender one finally came up to about 151. 152 in the center, which is where I wanted it at. So, uh, took it off. It's been resting for a few minutes, and we got the beef uh, uh, tri tip off. Beef tri, uh, beef tri tip came off probably about 15 20 minutes sooner, and it's had time to rest. So, I'm actually going to slice the tri tip, but not slice the pork tenderloins. We're going to eat that later in the week, but it does look phenomenal. So, uh, we're going to get the uh, beef tri tip sliced up here, and we're going to see how we did. All right, let's get this thing sliced up and let's see how we did. Oh wow, that's looking delicious. Looking kind of medium right there in the center. It's got a really good color to it. Try tip looks absolutely delicious. All right, so we got this tri-tip all cooked, all cut up. Uh, we smoked it uh, about an hour, about a, took about an hour. Uh, direct heat, uh, like I said, we had it hanging on the hooks in the barrel smoker, uh, directly over the charcoal with a couple chunks of wood in there. We had some hickory in there. And uh, it looks like it turned out phenomenal. We got actually had a little bit of hickory and a little bit of mesquite in there as well. Took it to an internal temperature about 135. Let it rest for probably about 15, 20 minutes and just sliced into it. Looks like it's a good medium to medium, medium rare, somewhere in that range. Uh, so let's take a quick bite and let's see how it tastes. Wow. That looks phenomenal. Bring it over here and show you a piece of that. Hope you can see that. The light may not be real good, but it looks phenomenal. Take a bite of this and see. 
Mm. Wow, that's really good. Taste all the salt, pepper, and garlic coming through on that. Uh, some of the onion, the other spices I threw into the rub. Really, 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 really tasty. So I hope you guys enjoyed the cook today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell up top where you get notifications. We have next videos coming out. And uh, until the next time, we get that smoker fired up. You guys, happy smoking. <laughs>